Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I finally did it. I finally reviewed all eight episodes of the Peanut Special miniseries, This is America, Charlie Brown, where the Peanuts gang had discuss, explore, and discover American history. They also take a journey to those early years, you know, before today as we know it. And the first four episodes aired between October 21st to November 11, 1988 as a weekly series, while the last four aired between February 10th to May 23rd, 1989 as a monthly series. So that's how it happened when it aired on CBS between two years. Uh, there are several differences here. Was that even though regularly the series was voiced by all the voice actors who played the characters, you know, Charlie Brown, Lucy Van Pilt, Linus Van Pilt, Sally Brown, Pepper and Patty, Marcy Schroeder, Franklin, as well as Snoopy and Woodstock. <laughs> um, although sometimes they're mostly silent, but for characters like Pigpan, Violet, and other characters. Regularly, it, Aaron Chase, which is the first female to do the voice of Charlie Brown, was the one who uh, continued to go on along with Erica Gale, Brittany M. Fortin, Brendan Stewart, Jason Mendelson, Marcy Cole, Curtis Anderson, Hakeem Abdul Samad, of course Bill Melendez uh, throughout the eight episodes. But only a few episodes, uh, like for example, uh, The Birth of the Constitution, the Mayflower Voyagers and the Wright Brothers at Kitty Hawk, as well as uh, the Music and Heroes of America. They had other additional voice actors like Jason Riffle, Jeremy Miller, Amy Foster, Christina Lange, Carrie Hollohan, Tan uh, Tanny Taylor Powers, Cam Clark. Uh, Sean Mendelson, uh, Grant Gilt, and and of course we got other actors like Frank Welker, Greg Berger, Hal Smith, Julie Payne, Bud Davis, Chuck Olson, Chip Menken, Brendan Holm, Marie Rice, and Elisa King. So. They got several voice actors uh, together to voice this eight-part miniseries right there. Charles M. Schultz must have taken a very hard time to work on this, just like how he worked on the Christmas special when it first started. Because apparently, you know, he didn't want to get into religious beliefs and all this other stuff that's in the mix of it. Because he wasn't so sure how this is going to turn out. But I bet, um, since he probably uh, had taken a lot of American history at school, I guess he figured that if any um, documentary and all this other stuff could talk about the American history, then why not um, the Peanuts specials? I mean, after all, you know, they always range from holiday to holiday or or several other um, episodic ones, even musicals for that matter. <laughs> so it, it really shows what what he can achieve and do, because he must have done a lot of research uh, before doing this, and offered millions of voice actors, you know, with Bill Melendez and and all the other directors like, like Sam Nicholson or Sam Gimes to be exact and then you got composers too like uh, David Benoist as well as David Bootback 
even Ed Bogus, uh, George Winston, uh, Winston Marsalis, and yes, David Brewson. Yeah, has been known for composing other films and TV shows, and yes, even the TriStar Pictures logo. And they even got singing the vocals, um, such as the Ren Nans, Desiree Goyer, uh, Lou Rawls, even though, yes, both of them have worked previously on all the Garfield TV specials. So there you go. Yeah, they, they must have taken a lot of work, a lot of effort, and a lot of time to focus on American history. Well, at times it's definitely historically accurate and it really shows, though it is very strange to see the Peanuts game exploring and journey into American history by actually being part of the crew, like for example the Mayflower Voyagers, not Voyage, and I made a mistake on that one, <laughs> where Charlie Brown Along with Linus, Lucy, Pepper and Patty, Marcy, Schroeder also joins in, and Snoopy and Woodstock. They help out, uh, they were part of the pilgrims, and they begin to find out uh, what was happening you know, during that dangerous crossing. I mean, luckily for them, they did live. I mean, it could have been a lot worse. <laughs> But of course, it wouldn't be accurate because, um, for, well, for starters, maybe there would have been more than 32, maybe a little or less. But of course, they had to add into it. And even um, episodes like, um, like. The Birth of the Constitution and the Red Brothers at Kitty Hawk. Yeah, I find it really odd that Charlie Brown and Linus had suddenly visit Pepper and Patty and Marcy for the first time, even though they had met them <laughs> you know, during the, the course of the comic strip. So you know they didn't really met them you know, during the 1903. But that was the idea. Or or the fact that the Peanuts gang had to work together and discover the the constitution that they were going on in Philadelphia in 1787. Yeah, this is when George Washington and the founding fathers that came to be trying to decide what new governor they need to hire or the chief executive and they're trying to make a decision but it only takes like four months during the summer to figure that out. It just seems like they just put this in just so we just focus more on them rather than what they were doing. Yeah, because it does spend time with Charlie Brown just creating his own sports or, you know, just working with Snoopy, you know, so hard before, yes, Benjamin Franklin came along. Now, I, I know that that was also odd, too, because um, Benjamin Franklin had already had discovered electricity long before this whole thing happened. So, that wasn't accurate. So, they knew that there was something wrong here. It seemed like they just had that on purpose. But the rest, uh, they, they really went for it. I mean, they, they really tried this hard to get into the story, you know, trying to trying to figure out um, how they did it, how they came to be, and how they fight, and how they finally changed the country forever, as it seems. So it, it took a lot of time and effort to do so. Now, you may want to ask, one of my favorite episodes of This Is America, Charlie Brown. I would definitely say, between eight episodes, my favorites are the Mayflower Voyagers, again, uh, 
I definitely enjoy the White Birders at Kitty Hawk, uh, so I think that's another favorite. Uh, the NASA Space Station, I thought that was really cool because they get to explore and and they even get to f flow around in zero gravity and they're astronauts and they get to see what's going on even though yes they're having hard times because it becomes so stressful but in the end I mean it's really cool they get to see what space is like and I, I love those moments also the great inventors uh, a great episode that focus on free inventors uh, Alexander Graham Bell, Thomas Edison, and Henry Ford, which they join in with the Duillet brothers. So, make that five. <laughs> but, my favorite moment of that was when they focused on Thomas Edison, where he was recording on the phonograph with his daughter Marianne when they did the speech of Mary Have a Little Lamb. That really worked too because um, it's almost like I, I'm always into recording uh, my voice on on a tape recorder just to hear what I had to say and it's always cool to listen to it. So, even though yes, I did used to be afraid of it uh, when I was a kid. Yeah, don't ask, but it's one of those uh, one of my experiences that I had that I didn't even know about at first until I discovered uh, a tape recorder where I get to record my voice and get to fool around with it all the time before I finally got my own tape recorder like the Top Boy tape recorder from the movie Home Alone 2 Lost in New York and as well as the tape recorder that I used for college I know I'm being off topic on that one, but I just wanted to put that in for, for the all time sake. And of course, uh, the music in Heroes of America, which I thought that was a wonderful episode where it was a topic between the American musicians and the American heroes that we have. Because it was really cool that you know you get to hear many uh, artists who most of which are music involving the country but they also had done some other songs um, to go through but then you get uh, famous uh, American heroes most of which are the are the woman heroes like Susan B. Anthony Amelia Earhart as well as Helen Keller and Clara Barton come to mind but then you get uh, black heroes like George Washington Carver and Martha Luther King, even the W.E.B. Du Bois. Yeah, there's like so many um, people that we had had worked together, you know, during the during the Civil War, the slavery, and everything that was going on. So they had to fix everything to become as as united as freedom and of course uh, the, all these funny moments that they put into it and I love um, I love the fact that Charlie Brown discusses their theme song of Linus and Lucy by Vince Guaraldi yeah, it really works it actually uh, fits the end of, of the miniseries so it was cool but with that aside of all my favorites, I definitely love all eight episodes together as a miniseries. Yeah, there could have been more, but then again, it would probably take a lot longer than we fought. If they had to go for the later years of America as we know it, like if they had to go for other topics. Um, they try to do that with the last one, which is, again, the music and heroes of America. You know, where they focus on Martin Luther King, and they did mention about John F. Kennedy and the Vietnam War. Like, I think they would have had some more on the other side of America. Like, they would have talked about Watergate or, or um, Richard Nixon and, and even Ronald Reagan and all that. But then, 
that would be like too much information and that's true they they wouldn't put that in or even the ones from the past too like some something in the middle part of the area hey we have to go there and also to get back to it um, I did love the moment when on the episode of the Smithsonian in the presidency uh, was when they actually spotted the the comic strip uh, from Peanuts that's created by Charles M. Schultz himself I mean I, I found it funny how <laughs> Charlie Brown and Lucy were trying to figure it out uh, why is our picture on the comic strip and they had no clue why. So it's almost like like they're breaking the fourth wall right there. I thought that was amazing. I even wondered if by the time they aired um, all eight episodes together, I, w I always wondered if they had re-ran the series sort of like a two-part, you know, like they played four episodes twice, yeah, the first and the last as a two-hour special on CBS for repeats because that would be really cool too if they had done that at the time. Like if for those who had missed the the episodes, that would be really cool to, to find out about that. But they did have re-ran the series uh, as part of the Charlie Brown and Snoopy show on the Disney Channel. They did actually air that. And, and then later Nickelodeon as part of your on Nickelodeon Charlie Brown. They haven't been re-ran for years until they finally put it out on DVD back in 2006 by Paramount. So now we have a chance to own all eight episodes together. Because unfortunately, uh, the Mayflower Voyagers is the only episode that's so common that it winds up being aired as part of a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. So they figure since this is a Thanksgiving episode, why not? Yeah. So that's why the remaining seven hasn't aired or we ran on TV for years. But nowadays, you can get it on DVD as it's been re-released by Warner Brothers and it's now available digitally so you do get a chance to watch it on Amazon or yeah, Amazon Prime or or any other source that you can find, even iTunes for that matter but <laughs> hey I mean it's always good to have uh, a digital copy to watch on your computer and all that but to me I, I prefer watching it on a physical copy because it would have been so much better. And it shows. And I showed you the set uh, last week, which I did a DVD review on, on the 4th of July. It was a nice set, very good box set. They put them in those thin layer cases. Yeah, I miss the days when whenever they release all these uh, TV shows or movies or everything they always put them in those thin layer um, slim cases you know, to hold the disc where they put them inside those box sets but nowadays they just keep putting all these clear cases some of which are eco box cases yeah, which suck because yeah, I don't like the fact that they cut them out by adding the recycle logo and then they added the circular pizza size uh, logo that just doesn't doesn't look right to hold a disc because it'll cause some scratches or so. I mean, it will be protected under paper, but it's just not a good way to protect your disc. So that's a problem. But either way. <laughs> And I bought that DVD at Best Buy when it was available for a good price. It was like, um, I, I say it was like um, around uh, $27 when I bought it. So it was a good deal. Not a bad price. 
but in the end I was happy I got to see all eight episodes together in good quality yeah high quality just like how it aired originally even though yes one episode did have a change but still <laughs> But of course, it was always cool to see all the adults portraying the characters as we know it because it's because of the nature of the events that's being portrayed and historically figures need to be added. So that way we know the discovery. Plus they added uh, archive footages and all this other stuff too. Like some of them are animated, some of them aren't. Uh, I thought that really worked into the special and since this is the first time they did it after the movie Bon Voyage Charlie Brown Don't Come Back and I know what have we learned Charlie Brown which is a follow up to that but they played as a special where they did a tribute to the soldiers in Omaha Beach that were killed yeah I would love to talk about that one someday but, but for now, um, I just want to continue. So, in, in a way, they really did a great job, and I really love it. Um, it almost makes me wonder how they took their effort to to put uh, American history together as an eight-part series. But there you go. <laughs> they really did work so hard. It almost makes you wonder why, <laughs> even though I learned American history in school, this would be a better source for it, but sort of. <laughs> because unfortunately, yeah, some of, a few of which aren't exactly as accurate as you may have expected. But for, for starters, yeah, you do need to uh, learn a lot of American history by books, um, by tapes, or by specials, and all of that. To understand it so don't just use uh, this is America Charlie Brown as your source of American history because because sometimes yeah, it may not be as accurately as you may expect it because they did some changes here and there so that's for sure but that's okay I mean the fact is I love the the miniseries it was well done well made well animated well even if they have maybe a tiny bits of errors, but that's okay. I still enjoy it. So, anyway, that's my final thoughts on This Is America, Charlie Brown. And I'm finally going to give my rating five stars. Yes, because why not? <laughs> I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.